Hey, what's up guys? My name is Kobu Man, and in this video I'm going to show you how to perform a Windows 10 clean install. So in case you don't want to update um, your current PC to Windows 10, you can simply perform a clean install. So basically if you're trying to have a clean slate, so everything is brand new, everything on your computer is clean, there are no bloatware, there are no additional software installed, just the clean Windows 10 installation and nothing else. So first thing first, we need to, to get a Windows 10 uh, CD image, so ISO image from Microsoft.com. And you can certainly do that by going to, and I'll go ahead and provide the link in the description, but let's go ahead and find it together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to google.com and I'm just gonna do a search of download Windows 10, okay? And this will get you to Windows a Microsoft Windows 10 download website. So from here, let's go ahead and select this first link. Um, download Windows 10 from Microsoft. <clears throat> Excuse me. And from here, it, it's basically telling that you can upgrade from qualified Windows 7 or Windows 8. And if that's what you want to do, that's fine too. Um, it actually works pretty decent. But like I said earlier, if you want a clean install, which a lot of people want to, you know, just like... You know, you want to start fresh, you have a new operating system, you want everything to be clean. And, you know, it's a pretty good idea. And also you have a little bit more control of what's going on with your Windows installation if you do so. Okay, so if you scroll down, you can um, you can see that down here we have a button that says download tool now. So basically, uh, once we click this, this will help you create a bootable image of Windows 10. Uh, whether you can either put it on a uh, compact disk or a USB drive. So we're definitely going to need this so we can perform our clean install. So go ahead and click on that and um, go ahead and download it. So if you, you know, we just go ahead and download it. And I'm just going to already have already done that. So I'm just going to go ahead and open it up from here. I'm just going to close this real quick. And uh, just a moment. And once it's downloaded, it's called Media Creation. Sorry about that. That was just a pop-up asking me whether I want to run it or not. Um, it's called uh, Media Creation Tool. So here we go. I have it uh, running. And once it gets a few things ready, uh, basically this is just license and, and terms of use. You can go ahead and read this if you'd like. But we're trying to get to the point where we download our Windows image. So just going to click accept once you're done reading, if, you, if you're inclined to do so. And it says getting through then. It's asking you whether you want to upgrade this PC or create installation media for another PC. And this is what we want. If we want to create installation media for another PC. Uh, so basically this will let us uh, create a bootable CD-ROM or a flash drive. And here it's going to ask you what language you want to pick. And you can also leave it here or you can pick whatever you want. But we're trying to get to the point where we download the software. So this is fine for me. I'm just going to click next. And here we can select what, what which type of installation we want. And you can se select USB flash drive or you just want to download ISO file. So go ahead and choose that and let's go ahead and I'm just going to leave it here for uh, um, on their USB flash drive just to kind of see what happens. I'm just going to click next and then basically um, basically it's asking you to install a flash drive. So go ahead and plug in the flash drive that um, that you are that you're getting ready to use for this type of installation. So basically once you put this in, it's going to detect it. And of course make sure you don't have anything on there that you want to keep because it's going to format it. Uh, basically once you put it in, it's going to create a bootable flash drive after which you will restart your computer and uh, select it to uh, basically boot from that device which I'll go ahead and show you here in a second. So uh, basically I don't have anything plugged in right now so I'm just gonna cancel out of that but you would just simply put one in click next and it will create it for you and I will see you um, here back here in just a moment. So now that we have downloaded our uh, ISO image and created our bootable media whether it's a USB or a CD-ROM go ahead and fire up your PC or reboot it if you will and then uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it through a virtual uh, virtual box or a VM uh, virtual machine software so that way I can demonstrate it uh, actually let me close this real quick because I don't want it to run prematurely uh, basically um, when you restart your computer it may boot automatically from that media that you have chosen but you may have to tell it to boot from that because you may not be able to detect it immediately um, occasionally you would have to set it up um, to detect this through BIOS on your computer but chances are you don't have to, you can just specify. So the reason I closed the other one though, because I wanted to show you, 
uh, once I fire this up uh, basically this is just like a computer that you know that you may have uh, here you can hit F12 see so it says here press F12 and basically it'll let you select to uh, which boot, uh, boot boot location you want to run from so here you can have you know one hard it, it, it'll, your computer is gonna look very similar to this so you can choose hard drive floppy CD-ROM or boot from LAN so <clears throat> if you have if you on your computer it may also give you an option for a boot from a USB but if you have it on your CD-ROM, you're just going to click C. And of course, it, it may be a little bit different on your computer. It may not even be F12 to get to this point. Uh, but basically, just kind of double check. And I'm sure if you're doing this anyways, you already know how to do this. So I'm just going to select CD-ROM because I have a, just the image, uh, ISO image, and I have it set to boot from that. And from here, we're going to go ahead and uh, start booting from Windows 10. Uh, Windows 10 uh, bootable medium okay so I'm just gonna move this things out of the way so you guys can see it and here's our first window first step to our clean install um, basically here it says you know which language do you want to install um, time and, and, and currency format I'm just gonna leave it in English and I'm gonna leave my keyboard input method to US but if you're in Europe you can certainly select that or any other country okay very simple so just going to click next on this one and then it gives you option to repair your computer but you don't have to worry about it because you don't have it installed anyway so just going to click install now and here you can uh, put in your uh, CD key so uh, basically you need your Windows 7 or Windows 8 um, CD key that you already have or Windows key I should say so whatever you have for your Windows key you would put, put it in here and then just click next um, I'm just gonna for the sake of uh, making this simpler I'm just gonna go ahead and click skip and it will still let me install it okay this is something that can be rectified later as well here are the, here are the agreements uh, Microsoft software licensing terms so if you want to read through this that's fine too I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, click accept so do a check mark down here click next and here's the difference between upgrading and a clean install so if you just want to upgrade your computer um, you know in the case um, you know in case you haven't gotten the update reminders which I'm sure most people already have uh, constantly uh, bugging you to basically upgrade to Windows 10 and if, if this if this is what you've done that's great but like I said if you're doing a clean install this is the option we want so um, instead of clicking upgrade we're gonna select custom install of Windows only and it says it's advanced um, it's not that difficult so you know it, it's not necessarily advanced in my opinion it's more of an intermediate thing okay so once you click advanced you will he you will see your uh, um, your CD-ROM or I'm sure your hard drive right but it'll be basically your C drive so here it would say what you have the size you have what's the free space and the and uh, basically it will give you a few options here so if you have something in it you'll be able to format it which is fine but keep in mind you will lose all of the data that you have on there so and if you're doing the clean install you may not worry about that that's fine too but you know it just just to keep in mind I don't want you to lose any data by doing this and you weren't you know for some reason unaware that this would delete all of your data so be warned okay so once you clicked on it you can click format delete it doesn't matter um, it will basically when you click on the next step it will format it to the proper uh, file system that you need anyways so from here just go ahead and click next and this might take a while but this is basically very similar to Windows 7 or Windows 8 clean install it basically will go through the motions it will install the files features updates what have you and it would finish up and it would get us to the next window where it will give us a little bit uh, a few more options which I'm certainly going to forward to and I'll see you here in a moment. So here we go guys, it's finishing up our main installation of Windows 10 and here it'll be done here in a moment. And in case you're wondering what I'm using here is a, a virtual desktop or actually I may have mentioned it earlier already but if you're interested in checking out on how to use virtual desktop I'll go ahead and, and I post a video link right here. I have already created a uh, tutorial on how to set up a virtual desktop software so that you can test different types of operating systems and we're almost ready here it's uh, 
Uh, I'm just kind of finishing up here our Windows 10. And once it comes up uh, with, the, with this main part of the installation, it will give us a few more options that we have to um, go through in, in setting up. And arguably the most important settings that we certainly don't want to miss because some of them pertain to our privacy and security. And the reason I say this is because Microsoft has implemented certain things within Windows 10 that are allowing um, your computer to send the information to them to Microsoft. And this may not be something that you you know you want to be necessarily concerned about. But if you are, stick around, and as I will show you how to disable these settings, or you know you can leave them enabled as well. We'll see. So after it completes its initial installation, your computer will most likely restart and then come back to this point where we are gonna have to set up certain things. And at this point, it asks us to put your product key. So again, if you haven't done uh, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and put in your um, genuine Windows uh, 7 or Windows 8 key, CD key in here, and then select next. I'm just gonna click through this later for the sake of moving this video along. Okay, so here is a very important screen. This is where you will basically tell uh, Microsoft whether you want a certain information or uh, activities be reported to Microsoft itself. Um, if you don't care about things like that, you can certainly go ahead and use, use Express Settings, but right down here under where it says Learn More, we're gonna go ahead and click Customize Settings. And I just want to show you guys this, just so you're aware of this. Here's here's certain things that are, um, you know, could impede your privacy. And I'd like to point this out in case you're worried about it, because I'd hate to tell you to uh, upgrade to Windows 10 or install Windows 10 and not know that these things are uh, in implemented within Windows 10. So here you can tell, and you know, by all means, go through. I'm not going to go through all of them, but they are kind of self-explanatory. Basically. For the first one, it says personalization. It says personalize your speech typing, um, um, inking input by sending contacts and calendar details along with other associated input data to Microsoft. So anything that you type or you know ink input or anything that you do, your calendar details, everything, like, any things like that, will that data will be sent to Microsoft. So if you don't want that, go ahead and click on this button, turn it off. Same thing here. It says send typing and inking data to Microsoft to improve uh, recognition and suggestion platforms. Again, sending data to plat to Microsoft again. So if you don't want, go through all of these. And if some of them don't, um, you know, sit well with you, if you will, go ahead and turn them off. Some things you may want to keep enabled because certain things won't work. So be careful with those. You know, um, here, you know, same thing with this here. Let apps. Use advertising ID for experience across apps. So basically, this is basically targeted advertising to you that comes from Microsoft. Okay, you want to? I'm gonna. I personally, I'd prefer that turned off, right? I don't want that. Here, you, this is a location. You know, um, let Windows and apps request your location, including location history, and send Microsoft trusted partners some location data to improve your local localization lo location services. You may want to serve, turn, you know, leave this on or off, depending what you're using this for. If you're using this, you know, for example, as a tablet, you may want to leave it on, you know, depending whether, you know, this feature is actually, you know, allows for GPS to be, you know, uh, enabled or, you know, things like that. You know, you may want to leave this on, you know, it's up to you. So, and if you click next, there's a, there are quite a few more uh, different things we can change here, you know. So, kind of go through these, you know, weigh your options and decide which ones you want to leave turned on or not. And once you're done, just go ahead and click next. It's going to re restart again. And after this, we're just going to have a couple of more windows that we have to go through. So, all in all, there's a couple of restarts after, you know, we change some settings. And, you know, again, like I said, kind of weigh your options, whether you want to, you know, choose any of those options that I you know that I've gone through previously. Um, here we go. It says, ask you who owns this PC. So if you're within a business or organization, you may want to leave that as my organization. But if it's just your home PC, just go ahead and select I own it. 
and then go ahead and click next and the point of this basically it gives you some uh, 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 pre settings um, that are allowed, that basically allow a uh, business type of computer to work properly, basically to allow it to access to certain resources like network, you know, network storage, and things like that. But again, if, if you're just, you know, personal computer, just, you know, select I own it, S select next, and we're going to have uh, another window here that says make it yours. Basically, what this is asking you to uh, use a Microsoft account. Basically, this is just like you use your account on your Android phone, like your uh, Google account, basically for syncing, you know, this and that, you know. So, you don't, you can use your Microsoft account if you have one, we can create one, and of course, they're going to, you know, pitch this to you so that way you can use it, and that's fine, you know, it's part of business. Windows 10 um, how is free as an upgrade, so... I can certainly understand that they have to have they have to make their money somehow and that's kind of goes back to that those options of you know basically sending information to Microsoft from your computer because they want to use targeted ads and they're trying to sell you stuff and that's how they make their money you know they're gonna use your information and they're gonna sell it to somebody else and they may you know use that to target you with ads or whatnot you know this is just a part of the you know part of the business that Windows 10 like I said is free so uh, you can create account, you can use the one you already have, or you can just skip this step. So this account here is not your login for, uh, I mean, it can be used as part of the login for your computer, but it's not your main login for this computer. It's not a local account. And this is what we're going to see on the next step. So I'm just going to click um, skip uh, the next step, or you can just click sign in, depends what you're trying to do. But I'm going to click skip to the next step. Uh, skip this step and go to the new one and here basically we're going to type in your login name for your computer so whatever you had before you know John Doe you know or whatever I'm just going to use my name so Kobo man and then here I, I highly suggest that you put in a password okay so I'm just going to type in password of course you can use whatever you want this is just for the sake of this so don't make your password password you know and I'm just gonna type in a hint. The last one was a hint. Basically, so you type in your password once, twice, and then use it as a hint. This actually may not take it. We'll see because I type in the um, typed it in like that. But let's see. We'll see. It may. Well, I guess it didn't care. That was actually uh, kind of disappointing. They made it. Uh, uh, the security is not that. I guess high of a priority when this, with this within this window version because I basically typed in my password and then here just because I put a space between pass and word anyway it says here it's finishing up it says this won't take long but you know how it goes things that say that when you know won't take long may actually take long you know it depends guys just to kind of throw this out there I will make more Windows 10 tutorials because Windows 10 is still a you know new operating system it's quite different from Windows 7 or Windows uh, well it's kind of si it's similar to Windows 8 but it's not um, very similar to Windows 7 at all in, in certain aspects when it comes to navigation and things like that where things are located they're quite in different spot and majority of people you know stuck with Windows 7 because it's such a great operating system but Windows 10 is kind of a combination of Windows 8 and Windows 7 so that's why I'm gonna make more tutorials to kind of make it easier to navigate and use Windows 10 because I do really like it despite uh, privacy issues and, and, and you know concerns with this type of with this Windows version um, I really like this operating system despite all of that okay and I would recommend it you know so um, I appreciate you guys watching share this video with friends and family and if you'd like to see more tutorials from me be sure to subscribe okay I'll see you next time bye bye